In this tutorial, we're going to be making this beautiful magnolia sugar flower. Welcome to Arise Cake Creations, bringing you the sweeter side of life. I'm Sarah. Now you may be thinking that this beautiful sugar magnolia flower looks harder to make than it actually is. Well, with a few simple techniques that you will be making this flower in no time. If you're new or a seasoned baker or sugar crafter, then you have come to the right place. As always, I will be leaving all of the information and links to related videos in the description box below or in the iCard. With all of that being said, let's get started. Take some 18 gauge florist wire, cut it into half, then using pliers, create a hook on the end. This will create the central stem for the main flower and also the slightly open flowers. Colour up some gum paste to be pale green. You will also need white gum paste as well for the slightly open flowers. Roll the pale green gum paste into a ball of a size of about 1.5 centimetres to 2 centimetres in size. Take your 18 gauge wire, brush some edible glue onto the end of the wire and then feed it through to the bottom of the pale green ball of gum paste and then secure it at the bottom. You will then actually pull the top of the gum paste and turn it into a teardrop shape. Take a small pair of sharp scissors, starting at the base, begin to cut small snips into the pale green gum paste. Literally, once you've done that row, begin with the next row and cut in between. Continue doing that until you reach the top of the bud and it's all completed. Roll the white gum paste into a ball size of around 1 cm to 1.5 cm. For the closed buds, use some pale green gum paste. For the petals, we are going to use a 26 gauge wire. Um, it helps if it's white so it doesn't show through the petals when it's threaded through into the petals. We're going to use the smallest size um, magnolia cutter. Prepare it on your um, cell board or your groove board. Um, roll out some white paste. Now this time, normally we would roll the paste quite thinly, but on a magnolia flower, the actual petal itself is actually quite fleshy and quite thick, so you don't need to go too thin. Um, cut out your petal, literally take some edible glue, brush some onto the wire itself, and then gently thread it through in between um, your, literally supporting the petal in between your um, thumb and index finger. Take a ball tool and thin the edge. Now you can use one of four methods to actually do the veining in the petal. Um, if you have a silicone mold, then by all means use it. Um, you can actually use either a skewer, which just gently, if you pass it over the top, you can create lines into the surface, or if you have a veining tool, then you can use that. Now I've got this particular tool here, which is actually a textured veining tool, so that when you actually roll it across the top, it actually creates um, texture all across the surface of the petal. Um, so I'll be using this, and I will literally be doing the texture on both the back and the front. What you need to do for the small petal is rather than actually use your ball tool on the front of the petal, we need to use it on the back of the petal so the actual curve falls downwards. Um, and you'll see once we actually place it into the um, foam petal former, um, we actually want to also place the petal facing wrong side upwards. If you don't have a foam flower former, then you can actually make an alternative, which was really simple to do. Um, just take a glass and some foil, and literally just um, put the foil over the glass, just literally so it creates a curve, and you can actually dry the petal within there. The mid-size petal and we will prepare it in exactly the same way. The only difference on the mid-size petal is that when you place it to dry in either your alternative foil former or your foam former, you will actually place it with the petal facing right side up in the former itself. 
The large petal will be prepared exactly the same way as the mid-sized petal. So now you should have nine petals in total. So leave them to dry or to firm up or to dry overnight. For the slightly open flowers, you need to cut three to four petals of the smallest size magnolia cutter. Prepare them in exactly the same way, but only vein um, one side of the petal only. So smooth the edge, then just vein one size and we can immediately use them. Brush some edible glue onto the base of the petal. The vein side of the petal needs to face outwards. Gently glue it onto the um, bud itself. Just make sure, I should probably add, make sure that the actual bud itself is completely dry because you don't want it dropping off as you glue the petal on. Um, it may help for you to, to actually turn the bud upside down as you glue the petal on because the right side up the petal may flip backwards um, and what you're going to do is actually just put each petal inside each other so that they actually wrap around the bud um, on my particular size bud um, i'm actually going to be using four petals so gently um, just wrap it round. Um, on this particular bud that I'm showing you, I'm doing a slightly more closed um, flower. If you want to make the flower slightly more open, then just make sure that you don't squeeze the petals too tightly and just leave maybe a slight bit of the edges just curving backwards. So here you can see the two variations of petals that I've done. So I've done one that's slightly opened and I've also done one that's slightly more closed. Um, the magnolia leaf is quite unique that one side um, on some of them, um, some of the varieties are brown, one side is green. So I've coloured up some brown uh, gum paste, I've coloured up some green gum paste. And what I'm going to do is actually just fuse these two together. Just place them one on top of the other and just roll a rolling pin over the top. You do not need to put any edible glue on the surface at all. To show you how to make this leaf without a cutter. Um, my leaf itself is, the largest one is about three inches in length and about um, one and a half to two inches in width and the other side which is sm slightly smaller is about two and a half inches but also um, about two inches in width as well. Um, so just cut the, the leaf out and literally I'm just using a scalpel, a sharp scalpel to freehand cut that leaf shape. Um, and then once I've done that, I will then just use a veining tool to actually put the vein lines. For the leaves, use either 22 gauge or 24 gauge florist wire. And like the petals, just literally support the leaf in between your thumb and your index finger and then just literally push that wire through. So once everything's dry, we can begin dusting. Um, I'm just using a selection of sugar flare colours as well as crystal colours. Now I've sped up the video for dusting the petals, the leaves and the flowers um, or else it would be a really long video um, but I hope you are able to see what it is that I'm actually doing on each petal. Um, so I've created um, a mixture of colours so I never really use my colours neat from the containers because I want them to look as natural as possible and one of the key tips that I could actually give you is basically uh, mixing your colours with some corn flour which helps to a kind of mute the colour slightly but it also kind of creates a more natural looking colour. Um, so on this particular flower, on this particular magnolia flower, um, most of the colour is actually, or all of the colour is actually on the back of the petal rather than the front of the petal. So what you can see me doing in the video is actually creating um, almost like a shaded ombre effect from the base going upwards. Um, and again on this particular flower, on the back of the petal there is a defined line uh, that goes up through like a central line that goes up through the center and then small lines either side 
For the slightly open flowers, I've just literally taken um, some of that pink that I've made up and just done a more darker shade at the base. For the centre part of the main flower, I've gone in with the lighter colour first. So um, just starting off at the tip with some um, yellow that I've actually made up and then mix some pink actually with some green and then kind of went round uh, the centre part. And then as I've kind of continued to go down, I've just intensified the pink as I've got towards the base. With the small unopened buds, I've mixed some green together. Um, depending on the size of the buds, if they're smaller, then I've painted them majority um, a very deep green. If they're larger, I've actually left the tips slightly um, lighter in color. For the leaves, I've mixed up some um, brown and slight orange for the back to dust onto the back. And then for the fronts, I've actually just mixed variations of different greens. If you have a steamer to steam the leaves then, or the petals and flowers, then by all means, again, use this. Now, I don't have one here with me in Thailand, so I always use this as an alternative method, but you do have to be very, very careful because the water can get very, very hot and the steam can get very hot. Um, so just literally allow some water to bubble and just allow the steam to um, literally coat the petals and also the flowers and the leaves and what that will do don't get them wet though you do not want them to be wet or soaking it's just literally allowing the steam to hit them slightly um, so what it does is it actually secures the petal dust and the colors that you've put on so for the leaves um, on this particular um, flower the leaves itself has a quite dominant central um, vein going down the front of the leaves so I've just mixed up some light green um, mixed with some yellow um, and I'm just using a very very fine paintbrush just to paint those vein lines in. Now I'm just creating um, calyx um, using dark green gum paste just for this slightly open flowers. This particular flower only has three calyx so I'm using um, a rose cutter, um, a five petal rose cutter just to cut out the shape and then I'm using the smallest cutter from the magnolia so it's almost like a triangle shape and then just finishing it off by cutting um, the shape freehand. I then used a clean um, scouring um, sponge, um, just the textured part as you can see in the video, just to create some texture to the surface of each one of the um, calyx there. Just literally just press it in, then you can just add some edible glue to the surface and then just stick it onto the base of your flower. Now it's not done in any particular way, just make it look as natural as possible. So once everything is completely dry, um, have all of your petals ready, um, have some green florist tape ready. Um, and what we're going to do is actually just bend the base of the wire back on each of the petals just so that we can have them prepared and ready. So we're actually going to tape the mid flowers on first. So take the first petal and begin to um, take your florist tape and wind it round the centre. Just make sure it's actually really close up to the centre of that first flower. Then you're going to take the next petal so that now you have two petals on there and just place it on the opposite side. At this stage it doesn't matter too much because what will happen when you start um, assembling your flower together the petals will move all over the place. At this stage don't worry about it too much because the petals are quite loose you will be able to move them around once you get all of your petals on. So you then take the third of the mid-sized petals and then put that on. So then we have all three of the mid-sized petals on. The next row that you're actually going to put on is the largest size petals. So put the largest size petal in between each of the mid-sized petals and just tape each one of those on as well. The final petals that we will actually put on, so the final row will actually be the small petals and they will literally just again just be placed underneath and taped on underneath and again because of the way that they were dried um, they will slightly fall backwards or curve backwards um, creating a very very beautiful flower so just make sure that those will actually fall in the space 
um, that's left over is just manipulate and move all of the petals into their right places so that the, the actual flower itself can look as beautiful as possible. So to continue assembling the rest of this flower, I'm actually going to use some brown florist tape. Now, the reason being is because this flower actually grows on a tree. Um, so the stems are actually not um, green, they're brown. If you do not have any brown florist tape, you could use green and then just color it up afterwards with some petal dust, some brown petal dust. Um, so make sure always before you use your florist tape to stretch it to activate the glue in the tape. Um, I'm actually going to let you watch the rest of how I put this together. Um, I will say that if you are assembling a flower or something like this together, just, just gently um, hold it up to the flower just to see where you think maybe the leaves and where the buds go. There's no literally set rules for doing this really. It's just about recreating how nature looks. So, you know, just take a look at the trees or take a look at some plants. And basically you can see how the flowers or how branches or how petals and leaves basically fall really naturally to actually tape it together. Um, one of the things that I do actually like to do on, if I'm doing um, a flower that belongs to a tree is just to make sure that you bend, like just put kinks into the wire so it's not left completely straight. Um, as the flower gets more heavy um, or as more things are added to it, it may be easier to turn the actual flower upside down as you're winding the tape on. It's just easier for the wire, the tape to actually kind of, you know, just literally roll in between your fingers to roll the tape around it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. It encourages me to continue creating content for you. If you have made anything from any of the tutorials that I've shared so far, then please remember that you can share it with me over on Instagram or Facebook. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.